Hi there, welcome to this week's lesson. Um, so we're doing a slightly different format this week um, in that uh, I'm pre-recording this. Um, so hopefully that will help. Like I say, I've been having a few streaming issues, so that should resolve that. Um, so uh, what we're going to be looking at this week is um, over the course of these online lessons I've been doing, I've been doing a series of master copies. And uh, what I wanted to do was um, to set you the project um, for those of you that want to have a go at doing your own master copy this week. So I thought I'd just say a little bit about um, how to go about that and some of the thinking behind it. It's a really great project to have a go at. Um, and um, for those of you that are doing my online classes, um, my plan is really is that we're going to spend this week doing our master copies and see how far we can get with that. And then next week, um, I'm thinking is going to be a bit like a half term. Um, I will be giving some feedback, but um, this week we're going to do our master copy. Then next week, I want you to basically take what you've learned from your master copy and apply it to your own reference material. So this is going to be a little two week project. OK, and this is sort of loosely based on. Um, well, this is like a speeded up version of art education or how it used to be done which is you might spend years copying masters um, before being allowed to attempt your own compositions. Um, but we're going to try and speed that up a bit for you. Um, hopefully you'll learn quite a lot from doing the master copy. Um, and then the trick is, is then to apply what you've learned. Um, and that really helps some of the ideas go in a bit deeper. OK, so the thing with um, copying uh, masters or very good artists is you're not seeking um, to emulate them um, exactly um, forever. Um, you're really trying to use it as an opportunity uh, to learn about painting, learn about art, sort of see what you can um, gain. Um, and then in the process of tackling your own compositions, um, something new is going to emerge. OK, so we can always trust that. One of the things people love about my art classes is seeing how everyone's painting is different okay um, and whatever it is that makes us different and unique um, that will normally shine through our work regardless of how many artists we copy okay um, but it will perhaps nudge you in different directions you'll pick up little ideas and maybe run with those for a while okay but it all helps so that's what we're going to do. So instead of me being at my um, my sketchbook, as I have been in the past, drawing things out for you um, today, I'm not going to rely on that so much because I say we're just going to be. Um, I'll, I'll give you some instructions and uh, you can carry those out in the week. OK, so um, let's just say a little bit more about um, why we might do master copies. OK, um, so putting painting to one side, um, how humans have traditionally learned um, difficult skills is um, through studying the people that have gone before them. So whether it's in um, fields such as science, maths, poetry, um, cooking, OK, it's not normally the case that someone comes out and just starts from scratch. You have to learn the craft and the way you learn the craft is by learning from masters or experts. OK, and those experts have probably learned from other experts who've learned from other experts. And so this is how sort of um, learning and knowledge gets passed on in almost all fields. OK. Um, if particularly if we take cooking as an example, I think most um, cooks would probably spend um, years sort of training with a sort of master chef um, before sort of opening their own restaurant. OK, um, so it's very unusual. Art has this unusual sort of idea of originality, which almost um, sort of makes this idea feel that it's somehow um, inauthentic. Um, and it's like the myth of originality. OK, um, now it's not to say that people aren't original or creative, 
but normally that creativity comes uh, on the top of learning what's gone before okay so we don't need to have any sort of um, issues with copying uh, masters okay so um, there's a sort of idea that first of all you learn the rules before you break the rules okay um, if you don't learn the rules then what you will do will just be all over the place okay and uh, it can be very frustrating I think it's one of the things that's a real shame about um, sometimes when art's taught is that so little is taught in terms of rules um, that people um, they can't really unlock um, their sort of creative potential because say that has to go on the basis of like learning these fundamentals okay some of which we're hopefully covering in these lessons here um, so in art in traditional um, sort of art uh, sort of learning or education uh, say master copies were very much a sort of foundational exercise okay so you would copy masters and you would do that for just for years as I say um, and uh, the reason is is because um, it's probably one of the best ways to improve your work okay you will learn things um, even if you run the risk of like imitation you're going to pick up certain things which would take you you know years of like um, just going out and observing from life I mean just to give you an example of the um, last week we were looking at painting at trees um, trees are so complex that they have you have to uh, simplify and abstract and some of those abstractions are going to be more successful than others so looking at the way um, artists have handled that that really does help give you some ideas which you can then uh, sort of feed into your own painting when you're out on location so it's a great way to learn um, and there's a scene here there's something that always comes to mind with this which is I don't know if ever you, if you saw the film Amelie there's a scene it's years ago since I've seen it but there's a bit that's stuck in my mind which is she goes and visits this chap and he can't leave his flat and um, what he does is he's every year he paints a Renoir painting and I think he paints it tries to get it right and then the next year has another go and um, he talks about trying to get the expressions it's a painting where there are um, they're having a sort of party um, I think on a barge or something like that and there's lots of people and they're all um, there's sort of an energy between them and they're all sort of casting sideways glances at each other and so there's a lot of interaction there and he just basically makes copies of that painting I really liked it though because it gave you the sort of sense that um, within that one painting was all this depth you know um, things that you could see again and again and sort of go deeper within that one image even if the attempt to copy it is ultimately futile you'll never quite get there um, especially when it comes to like expressions and the sort of subtleties of like the way like body language and all those sorts of things it was a worthwhile thing for him to do and I really like that idea and that was a very complex image um, so we're not going to be looking at anything quite as challenging as that this week but I, yeah it's a great thing to do um, there is another thing which was that um, academic artists in the past would often make copies of their own work okay so um, a good example is Rodan the Kiss recently we had um, the Kiss came to Ipswich and we had it in our museum um, and it was great but um, I think we heard at the time that um, Rodan created there were several copies of this um, and he made them almost to order okay and um, Damien Hirst famously sort of has a sort of factory where he has a sort of almost uh, lots of students that reproduce his paintings um, so there's a long tradition of copying paintings for different reasons okay I think the main thing is um, I think almost from an ethical point of view is that you always make reference if you're going to copy an artist's work you put after such and such after such, and you don't make a claim that it's your own work um, but as long as you do that you're part of a a sort of larger tradition okay 
And another reason why I think it's a good exercise is because um, within a single painting, um, there are multiple lessons to learn. So one of the things I've been talking about with uh, learning to paint is like any very complex skill, if you break it down into all its component parts, if you practice those individually, you can then bring them all together. So it's um, painting is a complex skill. And so that's why we do lessons on composition and tone and sort of line drawing and all these elements, they all sort of feed into each other. OK, um, so a single painting is going to be able to give you multiple lessons from um, the composition and the design, um, the tonal values, uh, the brushwork. So thinking of like impressionist artists, how they've applied the paint, colour schemes. OK as well as um, looking at how they've handled specific subject. Like we talked about trees, skies, boats, all sorts of things. So um, even just a single painting by one artist can actually, we can learn so much from one of these. Um, so yeah, I think it's a really worthwhile exercise and that hopefully you're gonna in, enjoy it and uh, get something from it, okay? So um, the next point is what are you going to copy? Um, and what I would suggest here is that you, um, you're specific. So try to think initially, um, maybe look at your painting so far and think about areas that you might be struggling with. You know, think about what's going well, um, what could you really do with improving, okay? It might be your people or it might be perspective. OK, so with that in mind, find an artist who is good at the subject that you want to yourself become good at and um, start there. So think of that artist um, and then you can perhaps um, either get a book on their work or look online and uh, go through and try and find a painting that you'd like to have a go at. OK, the important thing really is, um, like I always say with um, in my classes, you know, get lots, get lots of books on drawing and painting. OK, but make sure that you get artists whose work you admire. I wouldn't suggest getting a book on drawing and you look through, but you're not that impressed with the, um, the drawings inside. OK, because you're going to be picking up things from these books. So same here. Find artists that you admire and uh, seek to sort of understand what they're doing well, okay? Um, it doesn't have to be an old master, okay? So it could be a contemporary artist. Um, but again, try to get something that has been recognised so sort of widely as an example of great painting, okay? Um, so it, maybe if you're looking, um, you know, in magazines and stuff, find examples of things that have won prizes or um, sort of parts of contemporary exhibitions. Um, so if you're going to invest the time in copying an artwork, just make sure that it's, um, it really is, it represents a very high standard of art. That's what, that's what I would suggest. And then the lessons you learn are going to be sort of more valuable. Okay. Um, so the next thing is I want you to try and pick something um, that's not too overwhelming. OK, and what I mean by that is. So we're going to be working on this uh, exercise over the week, so you may get a couple of sessions to paint. Um, so try to think more in terms of artists, um, maybe impressionist artists, artists that work in like a la primer style one session. You don't want scenes that are incredibly complex that have like multiple figures in or um, lots and lots of buildings or, you know, large amounts of detail. Um, otherwise, you're going to get overwhelmed. What I'd really like you to focus on is some of the things we've talked about, which is um, big, the big sort of simple masses of lights and darks um, and how they fit together. I always think Monet is very good for these sorts of exercises because his paintings, although there's a lot in them in terms of um, the brushwork and the colour arrangements, um, 
they tend to be relatively simple in terms of the line structure. So try to go for something, yeah, that's not, um, not too challenging in that respect. Um, now, the next thing is um, when you picked your painting that you're going to have a go at, um, you need to sort of go through a process of just like um, what I'm going to suggest to you to do is to try and get something where you've got it printed out, not from a monitor or a tablet. OK, so take your um, image and just spend a while looking at it. OK, so it might seem a bit of an obvious thing to do, but um, unfortunately, we're very much conditioned these days to we look at images and we take them in. And we rarely spend longer than um, maybe less than a minute to look at an image. OK, but it's worth sitting down with an image, even if it's for something like five minutes um, and really looking at it. Pers I mean, I have a great experience, like um, when I go to the doctors and I'm in the waiting room, he has, um, I think he, they've got some Monet's um, reproductions, <laughs> as you might imagine, on the wall. Um, and as I'm sitting there, I can look at these Monet's and really sort of you start to see more than you would do from an initial glance. Um, it's one thing I've heard is that it's like when you go to an art exhibition, it's probably better to sit still in front of one painting for a long period of time than just simply rush around and look at everyone for about, you know, 10 seconds. Um, there's something about art um, and sort of looking at painting. You need this opportunity to sort of go over it and over it and it sort of makes more connections and you start to see more, okay? We would normally assume that once you've seen it, you've seen it, but there's there's sort of layers of seeing. OK, so that's a, that's an interesting idea. So have a go at that. Get your image, sit down quietly and actually look at it and think about it. OK. And you might even want to make some notes. Um, so think about it in terms of you're going to be trying to reproduce it and the sorts of things you're asking yourself. You're trying to understand how it was painted. Um, you're trying to understand things to do with perhaps the speed at which it was painted, um, the types of marks that were made. Um, is there a sort of rhythm to the painting? Um, Cezanne's very good for this. Cezanne, there's all this sort of like blocks of colour and chunks and there's a sort of almost like a rhythm to the painting. So have a look at all that and just try to make a few notes and just sort of absorb the work. OK, so once you've gone through that process, um, the next step is to actually start your painting. OK, so one of the things that I would suggest here, as I say, first of all, is to try and work from a print. The second thing, which I think is really important, is you want to find um, you want to get the size of the painting um, as accurate as possible. So there's no point in um, a painting that's like six foot wide. If you try and paint it in a smaller canvas, you're, you're never going to sort of recreate the, um, the look. OK, your brushes will sort of fail to capture that detail. Um, so you need to be able to get an image where you can find out what was the size of the original and then try as much as possible Obviously, it's a bit difficult in lockdown, but try to work to something that's about the same sort of size. OK, and that will that will help you a lot. Um, and um, so get your print set up um, and you need to sort of get it. I, what I like to do is I get my canvas sort of set up and then get my image on the um, what do I like on the left hand side? OK, so we don't want to look over our shoulder. We want to be able to see our painting, see our canvas and take them in at a single glance. OK, if possible, you would have your painting, your print would be, again, almost the size of the original. But I realise that's going to be, um, you know, um, that might be easy. It might not. So it's not essential. But in an ideal world, you would have you'd be working to the same sort of scale image. If we weren't in lockdown right now, what I'd be suggesting you do 
is go to your local art gallery um, and try and copy or do some sort of work from a painting that you can actually see, okay? Um, working from sort of prints, um, if ever you've had this experience is you start to learn about a painting through a print, one day you'll actually see it. Um, you might go to a gallery and then suddenly you see it and it's familiar. Um, but you'll often notice that the colours might be slightly different, okay? There are sort of subtleties that will always get lost in prints. If anyone's ever tried to photograph their own artwork, they'll know this, that somehow the translation between the camera and the printer will always sort of change the work. So working from an original would really be ideal. But assuming we can't do that, we get our print set up. Okay. Um, now, what I'm going to suggest to you is um, for this exercise, we're not going to do any tracing or gridding. Okay. So although there are situations where that can be um, sort of worthwhile, um, it's not a bad thing to do. Uh, but for this exercise, I want us to really use it as an opportunity to practice our drawing as well. So you can analyse it and try to find key marks like divisions of space. How high is this tree? You know, try to find sort of key points and get those in the right reference. But we're not going to do a, a tracing. OK. Um, and analyse the painting and try to um, try to work out how it was painted. OK. Um, so if you've done a bit of painting already now, you might have a few ideas like one question to ask yourself, have they toned their canvas? Was it done on white? Can you see any parts where there are sort of gaps in the brush marks? OK, so really analyse it and try to um, understand the procedure. If you're working from a contemporary artist, I mean, I've been doing some of mine from um, artists that actually show you the procedure, which takes the guesswork out. Um, but even so, um, it's something you can also do when you go around galleries. Try to think about how they might have started their painting. OK, and also consider the thickness of the paint. You know, where they work, where they sort of are the passages of paint thick. Um, if ever you've come face to face with a Monet painting, um, you can actually see the paint encrusted, you know, it's actually three dimensional. It's like got this surface to it. Um, so as a master copy, you're going to try to recreate that as well. So it's not just about visually getting it right. It's trying to get the handling of the paint um, as accurate as possible. OK, so you've done a bit of analysis. You might also consider um, pre-mixing your colours. Um, this can, so often paintings will um, revolve around maybe three or four sort of main colours, okay? Um, so um, you can look at those and you can try, I mean, you can do the exercise of trying to work out what colours they used. Um, I say this comes, the more you painted with different pigments, the more you might be able to guess. And of course, sometimes you just won't be able to. But you could ask yourself, well, does that look like it was yellow ochre or, you know, is that burnt umber? So you can try to sort of make a good guess of it. Um, failing that, you put out your palette as you might normally do and then try your best to pre-mix some of those colours. OK, um, that will give you some sort of piles of paint so you won't have be continually having to remix, um, remix little sort of puddles of paint. Okay. Um, now, just one thing, just before you actually start the painting um, properly, there is the option, maybe this was a few steps back, to do a few little thumbnail sketches. Okay. This also just helps to clarify in your mind um, what you're going to do. Um, so like we talked about in our previous lessons, particularly the exercise of breaking it down into light shapes and dark shapes is a very good thing to do. Um, and again, making a few notes about the colours, um, all of that can help just get your sort of mind straight. OK. Then we can start the actual painting. OK, so this is where you, you know, you put all that thinking to one side and just try and enjoy the process. 
Um, as I generally suggest, you work from the general to the specific. So what that means is you start big, you get the big shapes in, um, loosely blocked in, um, and you get the masses in. So if you've got like a tree, you paint the tree and you go through it bit by bit in a very simple way and then you slowly build up the detail, okay? Doing your best to try and get the, the look and the feel of the artist that you're interested in. Um, and you continue that through. And then what I want you to do is, again, this might almost uh, sort of um, go without saying, but I want you to strive for accuracy, okay? Um, when I've done these exercises in the past, um, it's a bit like an idea of impressionist painting. You can be quick and you can be gestural and you can sort of try to get approximate. Um, but with a master copy, there's something to benefit from actually striving to get it as close to the original as possible. OK, so I would say work on it. Um, if need be, take some breaks. Um, you can do various things like turning it upside down, looking at it in a mirror all these things and then try to get it as close as you can um, to the original okay um, and then it's, it's, it's a nice fun exercise because if you're painting if um, what you've aspired to paint is a great painting then although you might not get it you know spot on you will have something of sort of merit at the end of it hopefully okay so strive for accuracy and then you will have completed it okay you'll sort of take it all the way to the finish um and then what we're going to do then is um i'll also do a master copy i'm going to try and do one and just demonstrate this for you um which will be uploaded on wednesday okay and um then you can send it in to me and uh or you can upload it um onto instagram um some people were asking about how to apply the hashtag. So um, when you upload an image to Instagram, if in the comments you then add, you just write the word, you put the hashtag symbol and write, in this case, EAC Tutor or hashtag Master Copy, hashtag Oil Painting. OK, you can put 30 hashtags um, in an Instagram post. And then we can all have a look at it via the EAC Tutor hashtag, OK? So you might even make some notes. Um, I know not everyone likes this, but one idea I've, um, in terms of learning to paint, it's nice to make notes, OK? Write down something. And there's more to this process than meets the eye. It's not just simply a case of taking some information and writing it down. In the process of writing about painting and writing about what you've done, um, you're sort of making connections and um, thinking about your art deliberately in a way that might not happen if you don't do that process. So I would invite you to write a few notes, um, almost like a process of reflection, what went well, what didn't go so well. And um, for this exercise, this is all done um, we're going to be looking at trying to say apply what we've learned this week to our own version next week okay so try to keep that in mind um, so again with your notes um, think about how you might apply this scene um, to a more local scene or some some of your own reference material okay so um, that's that's probably as much as I can say at this point. Um, so I'm going to put some links below um, as suggestions for um, the, I particularly like the Art Renewal Centre. These are sites where you can find artists work. Um, the Art Renewal Centre has been going for years and it's a great resource for artists. Um, it sort of nudges more towards um, sort of traditional art. It does have impressionist art in there as well, um, but you might find some stuff on there. Or look through your magazines, um, have a look online, um, try to find something that really inspires you and you really feel moved to have a go at. And um, send me them in. Um, I'm changing my schedule ever so slightly at the moment because I'm pre-recording. 
So if you manage to produce anything this week, if you could send it in to me, um, say by lunchtime on Thursday, um, then I'm hoping on Thursday evening I can do a sort of um, a feedback session for you. OK, and uh, we can share that and see what everyone's done. So that's this week's uh, project for you. Um, I hope you, um, you know, get interested in this and sort of uh, attack it somewhat. And uh, as I say, I'm going to go up to the studio on Tuesday and have a go at my own. The only problem for me at the moment might be this thing of trying to match the image size. Um, I'm sort of half tempted to have another go at a Seago painting because um, I love Seago's work. And as a sort of um, plein air artist, his canvases, you know, he went from big to sort of relatively small. And I have some canvases about that sort of size. So that's possibly who I'm going to be looking at. But again, I've got so many books, I'm going to have a leaf through and see what inspires me. OK, so if you've got any comments or questions, you can always email me or, you know, put them uh, down below and I'll, I'll try and get back to you. Um, otherwise, um, I will see you on uh, Tuesday. Um, for those of you that are Zooming, um, we will do a Zoom. Um, this is going out on the Monday. Um, so we'll do Zoom at half 11. OK, so I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.